Hey everybody, it's Nick here for Grayscale Gorilla. I am the gorilla, and I wanted to thank you guys for getting the uh, Grayscale Gorilla Light Kit Pro. Uh, I'm just super excited to uh, release this, have this out for sale, and to share it with you guys because uh, I'm really excited for it. Uh, it does some really cool stuff. What I wanted to do in this uh, overview video is just give you a really brief, quick overview on what some of these tools do start to set up a scene with it and just kind of play around with it to get you familiar with it uh, I understand um, you may not want to watch each and every uh, tutorial in order before you start playing around uh, but this this will get you just started so you don't have to watch all the videos first so watch this one after this start playing around with some of the tools and then if you get stuck or have a question then refer to the video um, manual which it, which covers everything to to kind of answer any of your questions. So anyway, let's just move on with it. Here's the overview. We're just going to build a quick studio scene with some of the parts and kits that come with the um, come with the studio and uh, just show you what some of the stuff does. So let's let's do it. Um, so if you uh, haven't watched the installer, please watch the how to install it video first. That'll get you um, that'll get you installed into the content browser and then once you're in the content browser you're gonna scroll down and find that uh, actually you can click right here and these are the presets and when you, when you go down you're gonna see Grayscale Gorilla Light Kit Pro and if you double click on that puppy you're gonna be in the tools you're gonna be ready to rock this this thing so uh, here are the basic tools here's some HDRI stuff uh, light switch is a, kind of a fun thing uh, the overhead softbox the ring light the skylight the softbox and the spotlight are the main kits these bottom five here these are the main lights that are used to create uh, all the different types of looks that that you can make with with uh, different lights um, in also these folders are some other um, objects and studios and items that we can use so in fact we're actually going to start in these folders I'm gonna go in the objects folder and in the objects folder you're gonna see a bunch of objects that you can use to just kinda of play around with and light and have fun with uh, and that's basically what these do uh, this glossy products um, right here is fun for just kind of simulating like a little products set up the abstract rings are fun what we're gonna use are these reflective balls here if we double click on it it pops up into our um, scene, and we're, we're, we're practically halfway there, right? So from here, we need to add a studio. Now, you don't need to put a studio or a backdrop or, or anything on it, um, but in this case, we're going to add a studio just to kind of start get started here. In fact, if we go into studios, you're going to see... Um, starting from the top, we have pre-made studios in here ready to go. We have this... Uh, this product studio here we have the large product studio which is good for like cars and big stuff like tents good for like jewelry small things we have this no floor studio which is good for like flying stuff and flying text and logos and crap um, and here we have office room which is just a really fun one I want, you guys should play with all this stuff this bottom one's nice it's a window uh, lighting rig and uh, in fact um, let's just open this one and I'll show you what this thing does so if we if we just double click on the window lighting rig by default if we just hit render it, everything's gonna be set up for you to replace these objects with um, whatever you have whatever object or text or your name or whatever thing you're working on you could just bring into these pre-made studios hit render and everything is here ready to go in this case we have global illumination on and it's uh, calculating the global illumination you can see bam just like that we have our scene rendered uh, with global illumination and then you can replace where it says replace me up here you can replace this with whatever you want hit render and you're all set um, but in this case we're gonna build our own right so we have our reflective balls the next thing we need are these uh, studios so you see we have studio C which is shaped like a C studio L which is like a normal psych and then a, a U which is more like the car studio kind of long shoot through studio um, we're gonna use the studio L just double click on it brings it into the scene if we pull our camera out you can see bam we're, we're, uh, we're, we're making our studio bit by bit 
The next thing we need is a light. So let's back out of our objects and pick a softbox. And we're just going to double click the softbox. You can see it's loading into the scene. And to move it around, we just grab this softbox move um, uh, uh, null basically right here. And now we can move this softbox left and right, up and down, and it always follows um, the center of the scene. And that's controlled by the light target, which tells the light where to look. Now the light target by default is just kind of in the center here, which is fine. But just know that um, as you move this softbox around, it's always going to follow toward the center. In our case, let's put it up and to the right and kind of put it right down in the face of these reflective ball things here. Now the thing with the soft uh, softbox is the closer you get to your um, subject, the the softer the shadow is going to be and the bigger the reflection is going to be. So I like to cram a softbox way just right up into the object. Um, you can change the color over here. I'm going to pick like more of just an a, a off-white, warmish kind of color here. And you can see just like that, we have our reflections in the, in the uh, objects. We have the uh, softbox here, which is ready to go. Uh, and a couple more options just to play with. You could play with the overall scale of it, or you could scale it, you know, separately this way. And uh, so, you know, we, again, we could just kind of cram it in there. And we're going to zoom in and hit render and see what this looks like. So you can see we have our kind of our realistic uh, softbox texture here ready to go, and it's lighting our, our, our balls here. And then down below, we have shadow type. Now, uh, by default, it's on soft shadows, which you can see can isn't always the most realistic. Um, if you want a little bit more realistic shadow, you go to area shadow. And this is kind of a middle step between a normal light and moving into global illumination. Um, this is where the render times can go up a little bit, but the results are quite a, 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 quite a bit more uh, realistic. Um, so let's go ahead and use that light as the kind of key light. That's a what they call a, a key light in um, in kind of studio photography video terms. Anytime there's the main light, that's the key. So now we want um, to produce like a rim light, which is more of like in the back. And to do that, I'm going to um, just click on softbox again. I'm going to double click on it, make a new softbox, grab the softbox. And in this case, instead of moving it with the arrows, I can actually use this rotation slider to just kind of whip it around. And in this case, we want it kind of back here. We want to make this kind of rim light. I want to position it kind of far back and maybe something like really tall and skinny. You know, I could even scale up the overall scale and really kind of move this back into here and again we're moving the camera up just to just to get a test and that is uh, pretty cool we have this nice blue rim on the edge I like the look of that the only thing I don't like about this whole thing is the front uh, area right here this kind of dead zone and I think for that area what I'm gonna do is set up a, a spotlight so if we go back to our content browser and we double click on a spotlight you can see now what we have is something similar to the softbox, but it's smaller and it and it acts like a spotlight now. So what we could do is kind of rotate it around. And I'm just going to tuck it under kind of really low, not under the whole thing, but kind of really low just to fill in that bottom area. And again, I'm just going to zoom back in just to do a test render and see what this uh, see what this does. Now, it did fill in the front like I thought, and I like the little glow it's giving, but I don't like the hard shadow it's producing. By default, a spotlight has hard shadows on, uh, and that's usually typically what, what, a, um, what, a, uh, what a spotlight does is it produces really hard shadows, but in this case, we just want to use it as a fill light. So we actually gonna, we're going to turn the shadows off, shadow type none. And then now when we hit render, you can see it has our nice little glow here. It has our nice uh, um, little fill. And I like the look of that. Now, what I don't like is how bright things are getting. Things are getting too bright. So I'm going to dim down our brightness on our, on our spotlight. Um, I'm also concerned that the way this camera is set up, I'm not able to fill the background with the white texture. And that's really what you want to do with a with a with a psych like this with the white L. 
So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to make a new camera. And when you make a new camera, you actually can control the uh, focal length, which on a typical uh, kind of photo shoot is 50 to 70 to 80 millimeters, depending on what you're shooting. But I'm going to start with about 60. I'm going to turn on the camera with this little switch right here. And now you're going to see when I go to center uh, our object here, it's going to fill the frame with the background. And that's just because of how focal lengths work. You have a wide angle here. And as you zoom in, you start to... Uh, kind of flatten the image out and get a full background going. So now when we render, we have the full background looking good. It may still be a little bright. It's not too bad. Uh, but there's two things going on now. This is in my dang way. So we're going to move that first. I think it's this softbox. What's nice about having a camera now is we could turn the camera off and kind of fly out and adjust our studio. And then click our camera on and go back to our camera mode. So I'm going to shut my camera off. I'm going to tilt this up and away and just kind of um, come into the scale and kind of scale it up just to kind of keep it large. Uh, and when I go back to my camera, hit render, you can see it's out of the way. Things are looking good. Now, a little bit bright, still a little bit bright. So let's just go ahead to each of these spots soft boxes and spotlights just tuck tuck the brightness down just a bit just I'm just pulling down like you know just a little bit I'm gonna keep the fill light about the same but I probably took you know 10 percent out looks like we need to take a little bit more just to find that balance between all of the lights we're getting closer. I, I do like that this is blowing out just a little bit behind our, our product here. I like that. Um, you can see we have our key light. We have our fill light, which is our little spotlight. And then we have a rim light uh, in the rear here. And that's a nice setup. That's a nice uh, three-point setup. One, two, three lights ready to go. Now, the next thing we need to do is cure our, um, our grain down here just a little bit. You can see there's a little bit of grain going on in our shadows. And that's uh, when you use area shadow, sometimes you just need to crank up the accuracy a little bit. And that's all we're going to do. We're going to turn up the accuracy to something more like 80% on our two soft boxes. Uh, and you can also try moving up the quality too. I get it, I go into more detail in uh, some of the other tutorials included in this package. But um, just know by turning up the quality and accuracy, you're going to get cleaner shadows at the expense of longer render times. So you want to find the balance between what bugs you and what doesn't, stuff like that. That is looking pretty pretty good to me. Um, we could probably crank up the, the accuracy and the quality just a little bit more just to get rid of some of the grain. And this differs be between different objects. So you always want to kind of tweak that to find the right balance between what looks good and what takes long to render. Um, at this point, I'm pretty happy with our scene. Now, there are plenty of other things to play around with. You can come into the actual texture of the uh, reflective balls here. If we come in, we can actually go to the color and make them, you know, white, like really bright. And you can see they're going to be a little bit more kind of glossy, a little bit more bright, and react to the lights a little bit more. I actually like that look a little bit. A couple other things we're going to fix while we're here. Um, see how deep and dark these shadows are. I'm actually going to reduce the shadow amount just a bit to get rid of these perfectly black shadows. And I'm going to do that on both our both of our soft boxes. And that slider is actually in our shadow options. If you go to shadow density, you can turn it down and you don't have to go too far down. In this case, 95, 90 ish percent should be enough to start to get rid of the pure, pure black. And now that, that looks a little better already. We can actually maybe even pull a little bit more out. You don't have to go far with this, but this is going to give you a, a little bit more realistic um, uh, render because there's so much light in the room now that it's rare that you'll, you're going to get these spots of black, right? So I think it's all looking good. I may take the brightness down um, of our uh, of our stuff just a little bit more, just to kick another 
couple percentage out. And again, we could tweak all day, but you know, we're just getting the final touches in here just to make sure this thing looks good. Well, this is great. Um, if you click off your camera, you're going to see you pretty quickly. We built a three point lighting rig that uh, has a key light, a rim light and a fill light on our object with it all ready to go. Now what's really cool is we can move all this stuff around and we can change the colors of all of them. We could change the, uh, the you know, the gobo of the, of the light. So now we have like a, a window pattern in our reflections instead of um, just a traditional, uh, you know, square box. So now it, see, it kind of looks like a window over there. I actually prefer that. I'm glad I did that. So again, play around with the options. Uh, if you get stuck uh, in some of these other ones, play around with the skylight ring lights. The overhead softbox is really useful for a, a kind of an overhead fill. These are a little bit more complicated, but they have uh, tutorials that go along with them. Essentially, you can bake your own. Like at this point, what we could do is we could bake this whole thing as a light kit image, as an HDR image that then we can use later down the road to light other scenes using global illumination and HDRI. Um, so watch the tutorials on that. And um, uh, I, I think that's it. You know, at this point, play around. Uh, I know you guys want to get your hands dirty. Get in there, start playing with it. And again, if you get stuck, come back to the training. Um, and uh, every question should be answered in the individual uh, uh, training quick times that go along with each of these uh, light kit modules. So uh, hopefully uh, you like the overview. Just a quick, quick example of what we could do with the uh, light kit. Uh, it's just the tip of it. I'm really excited to, uh, again, thank you guys so much for uh, getting it. Uh, go play around. D -d -d Stop talking to me. Sorry about that. Uh, I'll see you guys in another training if you need it, and I hope to see you there, guys. Thank you, everybody. Bye.